So uh, my topic uh, touches uh, somewhat uh, similar things what a couple of the earlier speakers talked already about AI complexity of systems and also a bit of a need for explainability therein. So during the last few years, we've seen a massive boom in uh, analytics in general. And at the same time, we've also witnessed a great change in the mindset of business students. We're no longer afraid of mathematics, but our students are going to be the game-changing generation who will be able to take the AI hype with a grain of salt and make the best use of that for making better business decisions. Now, data science, uh, statistics, and all the related disciplines, they're so much connected to data. The emphasis on data has been a bit too much, maybe. I mean, it's of course, it's, it's the great new oil of this era, but uh, at, and of, at the same time a royal pain when it's not there. But that's not really what we look for. Instead, we look for being able to make smart decisions under uncertainty. And that's generally what business is all about, right? Now, why do we need uh, explainability? Like when we have these great new tools and all sorts of algorithms are being born all the time. When I visit the conferences, like you see 100 presentations, all introducing new algorithms. And the complexity of those is just growing. Well, of course, there are good justifications why, why it's growing, but there is also at the same time a growing need uh, to, uh, to make it uh, explainable. Now, that's, uh, this, there's a lot of confusion around these terms, like interpretability, explainability, and all those. They are used as, as, um, in a very messy way. Now, one of our projects, I'm actually taping, taking here a deep dive into, into research uh, style, what I usually don't do, and that's qualitative research. So we go and study uh, how um, AI-related projects are done in very large institutions. In particular, we are, we are now collaborating with Danish Business Authority, who are uh, doing EU-level projects with really broad-scale impact, also on the functioning of many fields. Uh, so in these things, like, of course, when you talk about machine learning system and especially uh, these uh, new things, deep learning and, and, um, and its derivatives, so one often ends up with, uh, with pretty complicated, high-performing systems. But when we ask that, why did we end up with a decision like that? Sometimes very difficult to address. Of course, one can go and take yet another circle and let's put a local approximation. Let's create an uh, interpretation using yet another model. On top of that model, well, who explains the new interpretation? Because that's a model as well. Well, anyway, <laughs> there are many ways to go into circles. But uh, this is a project we're, we're doing with Esko Pentin, and uh, he's a professor of practice and Antti Salovara. So we're looking at, at this from, uh, from a number of perspectives. So it's a, it's a very much ongoing, ongoing project, uh, what we have. And um, of course, there's the money aspect here. Companies really need to look into this, so they, they cannot take it lightly. So when they build the systems, they need to take uh, the, the impact of complexity also on their business. That maybe at some point, they're going to be called for an answer. Maybe that doesn't happen, but there is a good risk for that to happen, especially when one moves into the more sensitive territories such as healthcare. Bringing more automation there is going to create also need for being able to tell exactly why did this happen. So we we'll look at, <laughs> we'd like to make a distinction, of course, between the interpretation and explanation. Like interpretation might, is, is more like a little bit inward bound. Uh, that being a, uh, that for instance, as a developer or uh, of the system, I would be able to under, uh, interpret the result what we have. Explanation is something where we have external stakeholders, the ones to whom we actually have to explain the stuff and the decisions in a way that they they sort of relate to them. They are able to understand, and that's a bit of a perspective that depends also on the on the stakeholder side. 
So that's what makes uh, this kind of a conceptual division interesting. So we're we're really looking into this. Like, okay, there there might be that car companies, car manufacturers might take a policy that, okay, when when it comes to protection, we'll make a simple decision. We'll protect the drivers. So that's one way to do it, but that's probably not not as as uh, straightforward at the end that that would work. But so when uh, when the automation is increasing, there also. Um, the need for explanation of the performance is needed. But that's a bit easier maybe than when it comes to AI in, in diagnosis. Now the term AI is, is very um, uh, very confusing as well as it's, it's super broad. Most anything that is, has to do with stats, machine learning, optimization fits under that topic. But in general, it's really becoming a major concern. So if a doctor relies on an AI's decision, who takes a responsibility when the diagnosis is not right? And it might be that under time pressure, doctors might be increasingly like willing to just push a button and accept that, okay, this is the proposal the system gave me, and I've, I've been accustomed to treating patients with that, and um, it's, it's been usually correct, but my patients were old. They were old, uh, so they were given, given uh, like such drug doses that, okay, they could tolerate those. But then we had an outlier which the system had not learned about, and so it was a small baby and we're giving a huge dose. Well, what happens? The system just wasn't trained to, to handle such cases. Now that's the thing that needs to be thought about. But in general, also when it comes to solving business problems, we're talking about, when we talk about prescriptive analytics, so basically optimization, so there we are immediately discussing objectives and need for more value-focused thinking. And that's uh, one, of the, one of the important topics I see, see as a development for future. It's not so much a technology-focused, but more of what, we, what is it that we want and who takes responsibility, what sort of values do we want to drive for. Now here's um, one project, what we're recently working, is uh, actually it's now, now really starting, the treatment of sleep apnea. So this is of course done in, in, a, in a collaboration with, uh, with medical doctors who've been developing this kind of a tre general tre accepted treatment guidelines for Finland. And um, we hope that we'd be able to, uh, able to find more optimal uh, treatment policies as a result of this study. But there are many steps uh, before we can, uh, we can go there. But in general, we'll be also uh, planning to use uh, statistical machine learning uh, on, on this problem. But we're trying to do so that the systems that are being developed will, in terms of their decisions, be transparent enough to the doctors so that the practitioners can also sort of adapt to these uh, the solutions what we come up with. So we're really building them together with them, with the doctors from the field. Another one is uh, the B2B uh, AI project. So this is uh, in collaboration with marketing and, and, and computer science guys. Uh, it's been running for a while and they're, uh, they were re really tackling a, a pretty difficult field. Like B2C problems are easy. Like when you have a, uh, a single uh, platform that's selling on the net, internet. So, okay, it's immediately able to collect a lot of data on, on the behavior of its customers and, and how they make the purchase decisions. And it can quickly learn to do recommendations and sort of uh, really model the purchase path and purchase uh, behavior of the clients. But when it comes to businesses, they are a whole lot more difficult because the uh, products that they tend to purchase, they can, they can be in millions. They can be uh, in tens of millions of euros worth those products. And uh, the amount of people that are likely to be involved in them can be really massive. So it's not just one or two guys taking, uh, uh, that run the process, but there's going to be a lot of people involved. And the process lasts long. Now, this is a headache for... Uh, other companies who are trying to sell their products. 
So how can they effectively spend their resources in this process that they, they target the companies that are really interested and at the stage where they are really looking for, uh, forward to getting contacted and getting, getting offered some in explanation, advice on, 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 okay, this kind of a solution what we have so they can be a more effectively able to compare and decide sort of things to do. Like in a super simplified manner, one could see that, okay, we have this sort of a straightforward pipeline, like this really um, uh, cutting corners quite a lot on the, on the theory side. But um, just to give an idea, so we, we'll, uh, we could uh, brutally look that, okay, there are certain stages where these uh, buyers are, like there is an initial noisy stage where uh, they're just browsing around, looking stuff, uh, but not really, uh, not really yet even thinking about any specific purchase. Early funnel, well, they're getting more focused. They're already uh, starting to think that, yeah, we we are really interested in these products, and and yes, this this looks like a candidate. Now mid funnel, more that, all right, we're screening the candidates. So we're already uh, well now. That's a stage where one probably would might want to get contacted. That the Okay, we want more information on the, the solutions. Late funnel, then finally closing, closing the deals. It's a really simple idea. So now the thing is that the seller company's problem, if one thinks in like a hidden Marco model, like the old classical uh, machine learning model, model style, so one could think that oh, we have this latent stage, what we would like to guess, that based on the observed data, what we have on the behavior of, 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 of the sort of customers, the buying companies. So uh, we'd like to infer from that data what the, what the buying stage is. And in that, one can do uh, a lot of content analytics to, to see that what sort of profiles there are in the content, in terms of the content, what they look at. So in one, uh, one, one data set in this project is, uh, is like where we have uh, millions and millions of, of data points uh, representing the content and the browsing behavior of, of uh, these uh, business customers. Now, one of my uh, long-term favorites is, has been the bi-level optimization. I, I have a lot of papers on this stuff. And um, more recently also on the, um, on the uncertainty. So when an, uh, one wants like a well-known example, one could think of a principal agent problem. So we are looking at problems where you have two layers of optimization. So like a leader and a follower. And uh, the follower's problem is basically parameterized by the leaders decision. So the follower has to take what the leader decides and then solve his problem problem under that that condition. Now that of course gives a gives a pretty general framework that has a whole lot of uh, applications in a, in a different areas and it can can accommodate situations where the decision makers are equipped with different levels of power some having more than than others. But there, there, this, this is very closely tied to the business context in, in, a, in a very number, mon, number of ways. But one can also draw bridges to, for instance, the meta-learning cases in, in deep neural networks or, or whatever uh, models whose hyperparameters one wants to learn or whose structure one wants to learn. So one could frame that also as... Uh, bi-level problem. But mostly we've been looking at like um, technical algorithm development and its applications to these, um, these few areas so far. Thank you.